if you have malleable fibrosis, you should be tested because that also will tell you a little bit of the reason for this malleable fibrosis to appear. What's malofibrosis? Malofibrosis, it's um, one disease that happens in several patients across the world and is characterized by the formation of scar tissue or fibrosis in the bone marrow. The bone marrow is the factory of the, you know, the cells in our body. Uh, mostly all you know, the cells that we see in the blood are produced there. So what we see, white blood cell counts, the red cells, the platelets, all of them are produced in the bone marrow coming from the stem cells. And something happens, an abnormality happens and takes place, and that leads to an abnormality in the bone marrow production of cells because of all this scar tissue starts to develop. As you can imagine, if you have a lot of scars, then there's not enough room for those cells to grow and produce enough in the bloodstream and that leads to what we call clinically the myeloid fibrosis syndrome. Myeloid fibrosis is, you know, a group of, you know, diseases uh, called myeloid peripheral disorders or neoplasms, where patients have initial different characteristics. So, for example, some patients may have something called essential thrombocytemia, where they have a lot of platelets in the blood because of this, you know, neoplasm. Other patients, something called polycytemia vera where they have a lot of red cells. All those red cells, when they're in excess, they end up you know, causing trouble in the future with, because scar tissue develops. And at the end, you start seeing the myeloid fibrosis. So it's not an uncommon situation where patients who had the diagnosis of polycytemia vera or essential thrombocytemia to eventually develop the full-blown myeloid fibrosis. So they no longer have increased numbers of red cells or increased numbers of platelets, what they do now is have the scar tissue and actually less blood counts. So that condition is called secondary myeloid fibrosis, basically a uh, scar tissue that happens in the bone marrow after having suffered from polycytemia vera or essential thrombocytemia. There's also primary myeloid fibrosis where the patients come up with a diagnosis upfront. And many of these patients overall have a mutation that is uh, specifically in a gene called JAK2. So if you have myeloid fibrosis, you should be tested because that also will tell you a little bit of the reason for this myeloid fibrosis to appear. Other reasons for uh, appearance of myeloid fibrosis could be exposure to certain chemicals. Uh, some families uh, may also have uh, a specific predisposition to that malignancy. So uh, something to be looking at when you have a diagnosis or when your loved one has it, so you get genetic counseling. One thing that is important about myeloid fibrosis is that it's a rare phenomenon, it's a rare disease, but when it, it happens, it affects you know the body as a whole. We uh, know that because of the issues in the bone marrow, we start to get other symptoms. So patients feel fatigue, they feel that because of the anemia. They also may have issues with their spleen being very large. The spleen is something that is here on over the left side of the rib cage. And you start to feel a fullness sensation. It could be severe, and that typically warrants treatment for a lot of patients. Some of them may require transfusions as well because they no longer have enough production of blood cells and they need replacement on a you know a certain frequency over time. So once the symptoms have appeared and there is actually a score system that you can check uh, either online, we also have an app, uh, the Massive Bio app uh, for myeloid fibrosis. You can download it and check your symptoms and see if there's a potential indication for treatment that you can discuss with your doctor and also clinical trials, etc. So once you have that specific decision for treatment, then there is a number of options. The first option is typically the use of certain pills or drugs that are targeting that JAK2 mutation, and uh, they're called JAK inhibitors. So there's a number of them currently available for patients, and they all came because of clinical trials done in the past for patients just like, you know, the patients who present right now, but they didn't have those options in, in the past. 
So many patients start on these JAK2 inhibitors. They remain on treatment for several months. And eventually, if the cancer progresses, uh, that means that the cancer is no longer responding to the medication, then they need to look for more options. For second plus line options for myeloid fibrosis, something that we always encourage are clinical trials because that's the way of the future to find better options for patients and is really going to lead us to the next generation of agents for these patients. Once the patients have progressed following the treatment with JAK2 inhibitors in first line, there is always an option for clinical trials. It could be available for patients who maybe responded initially, but not enough. Basically, the spleen didn't shrink enough or the symptoms persisted, or the response was you know, suboptimal to a certain extent, so they can be treatment options to add on to those JAK2 inhibitors. Other clinical trials in second line and beyond include new molecules that are currently being tested in clinical trials. And that's something we always recommend for all patients with myelofibrosis to consider, either upon diagnosis and the time of treatment is coming, or when the patient has progression of disease following the use of first-line agents. So uh, we invite you to uh, you know, check your options with your oncologist. We have a tool that we offer our patients uh, at, at Massive Bio. We have an app that you can check your symptoms, you can check the potential trials around you, and discuss those options with your doctor. And we're here to help you. So whatever you need, you know, we're here for you. We're doing this for every single patient who is interested to learn more about clinical trials and we do it absolutely free. So um, looking forward to having more exchanges and hopefully this was uh, an opportunity to learn more about myelofibrosis and the options that are uh, in front of you. Thank you.